Hey guys, it's JM here with another study Bible review here on the Disciple Dojo YouTube channel. And the first thing, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Not that you're an elephant, but we have another person joining us. This is Joanne. She is going to be our hostess. With the mostest. The, with the mostest, for sure. That way you don't just have to look at him the whole time. I, you should definitely, <laughs> this, I mean, come on. What would you rather look right here? This is, I'm going to kick it off to her and she's going to, what, what would you even call this? She's going to be our MC. That's right. You're going to guide. You, I to just, I want to know, I want, I'm very interested in what JM has been reviewing. And so I'm going to ask him some questions about the latest Bible that he has reviewed. Go for it. Okay. So tell me what Bible that you are reviewing right now. We are going to review today the starting point study Bible. This little guy right here. So who gave us this Bible? Well, this was bought at a thrift store, but <laughs> this is produced, it's published by Zondervan and it's produced by the Louis Palau Evangelistic Association. So if you know Louis Palau, he's a, was a worldwide famous evangelist and it's done between Louis Palau Evangelistic Association in partnership with YWAM, Youth with a Mission, okay. which is the largest missions organization I believe in the world. Why is this Bible called the starting point study Bible? This is intended for people who are just beginning to study the Bible or who are new Christians. So maybe they went to an evangelistic meeting or some kind of thing where they were introduced to the Christian faith. And this Bible is intended to be something you can hand to somebody who's brand new, but who is serious about mm -hmm. wanting to know the Bible. It, it'll walk them through different mm -hmm. passages that are important. Mm -hmm. It'll explain concepts. And so it's geared towards not the seasoned theologians, not the biblical scholars, but to people who are brand new to the faith. Which is a good thing for anyone who has become a believer just recently and yeah. really doesn't understand. Yeah, the Bible, Bible, you know, the Bible is a hard book to get into. It's a hard book yeah. to understand. And so the purpose of this study Bible is to kind of pull back the curtain and say, okay, here's how you get started in studying this thing. All right. So that being said, what are you going to find inside this Bible? What are the features? Well, we'll, we'll start with the physical, what you're actually going to see. It is, as you can see, it's double column. So it's not a single column format, which people watching my reviews, uh, they know I prefer a single column because it preserves like the paragraph structuring of the text. Right. But double column saves space. And that's why most publishers do double column. There's a center line, which is usually cross references in most mm -hmm. Bibles. In this one, it's it's not there are some cross references, but I'll talk about the center line in just a little bit of what its purpose is, because it's more than just cross referencing. It is a black letter edition. What I mean by that is the words of Jesus and the gospels are not in red. Everything's mm -hmm. in black letter. Letter, except some of the words are in blue. Why are some of the letters in blue? That's a great question. <laughs> Such a good host. The reason that some of the letters, and I'll show you, you can see some of the letters are in blue, is because what they've done in this Bible is they've taken every concept that's important theologically or biblically or spiritually, they've put it in blue font, and that lets you know if a word's in blue that you can look it up in the dictionary at the back. And there are going to be definitions, terms like command, compassion, concubine, ooh, confidence, <laughs> consecrate, uh, not just C words, there are other words too, floodgates, first fruits, filled, fellowship, Passover, pagans, all of these terms that have theological importance or that just aren't everyday words we're used to, or words that we may use in one context in our modern English, mm -hmm. but they have a different meaning in biblical context. Mm -hmm. It'll give you a, a little background on that word. In addition to important terms being in blue, you can see that some verses are highlighted in blue. And these are verses that the authors or the contributors feel are important verses for Christians to either know or to memorize, especially the, the verses that are kind of the greatest hits right. of the Bible. Those are going to be highlighted in blue. Okay. So can I see if my... Favorite verse yes. is highlighted? Yes. Give me your favorite verse. Okay. I personally really like Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Not, not Philippians 4, 13, but 6 and 7. She's changing it up. That's right. I like it. So we turn to Philippians. So here's Philippians 4. And then look right there in blue, your verses 6 and 7. Bam. So I picked one of the greatest hits. The greatest hits indeed. So as I'm reading through this and I see popular verses and blue letters, is there any commentary on those verses or those letters on that page? There 
is not really. You're going to get, they're going to be the center line that I mentioned is going to have definitions. It's going to have terms and saying for more on this term, flip to this page. But as you can see, there aren't any study notes on the page itself that go with the verses. There are things like, here's an example, there's a little map. There are other things where there will be these little essays, these little call out essays in mm -hmm. blue, but there's not any actual study notes that go with the text themselves. So to me, that feels just a little confusing. Well, that's one of the drawbacks, honestly, as I've been reviewing this Bible. The goal is to be user-friendly, but the way it presents it is a little bit confusing. Like some of these, so these articles that I mentioned, these articles, they're all about certain topics. So this is an article, the topic is Victorious Christian Living, and this is in Psalm 91. So there's an essay about Victorious Christian Living in Psalm 91, and then at the bottom, it'll say, Path Introduction found on page 181. The path introduction, this is where it gets a little confusing. From what I can tell, they've created this Bible with these paths that they walk you through scripture. So mm -hmm. they're arranged topically. What does the Bible say about victorious Christian living? Mm -hmm. Well, all of the places in scripture that are dealing with that topic, they've kind of guided you through section by section. Okay. And you can look at the bottom and it'll tell you for the previous entry in this, see and then it'll give you the reference. And for the next, see this. So the whole purpose is to be kind of like what the old Thompson Chain Reference Bible was. You can start with a passage, and you can follow the readings that will guide you through the Bible into all of these different books and different passages and different verses that deal with that topic. Okay. It's honestly, it's pretty artificial. It's it's something that they it's like someone guiding you now read this now read this it's it's like a Charles Stanley sermon yeah. now turn here now turn here yeah. now turn here you know you're flipping around and sorry if you're a Charles Stanley fan I'm not really knocking him it's just he, he's the biggest example of that type of preaching the here's fifty thousand verses on one particular topic and I'm just gonna hit them hit you all with them and that gives you a systematic understanding of the Bible but sometimes it can detract from those verses in their context right and that's the danger mm -hmm. and because they're there are no study notes that, sense. that go with it. It's a little easy for this to become just like a guided tour of Bible verses mm -hmm. instead of understanding the book as a whole. Right. The, sto the story of the Bible. Yes. Now, yeah. there are two things that it does in the back that m help mitigate that. There's one essay called The Story of the Bible, and it gives you the whole flow of scripture, big picture level. And so it's kind of like a basic biblical theology that a new person who's new to the faith was like, what's, what's the story of the Bible? And they can read this whole overview. It's pretty helpful, actually. I'm glad mm -hmm. they put it in there. There's another section called What the Bible Teaches, and that is a systematic theology essay that takes these paths, these terms or concepts and says, what does the Bible teach about God? What does the Bible teach about sin? What does it teach about man? And it has a little paragraph on each one. Okay. So you're getting a biblical theology and a systematic theology, but it's not using those terms because those are more like seminary Bible nerdy terms. Mm -hmm. It's just saying, what is the Bible? What's the story of the Bible? And then what does it teach on topic X, Y, Z? And when I asked that question about the story of the Bible, I actually did not know there was a section called story of the Bible in this Bible. Yes. So that they, is, that is a, seems like a positive feature. Yeah, it is. It is a helpful thing for sure. One thing it does do in terms of book introductions, like, because the Bible is, you know, 66 books, mm -hmm. 40 different authors, so many different genres over hundreds, thousands of years. Mm -hmm. How do you, what, what's each book about? It gives you an introduction. The introductions, they're, they're not super, super short, but they're also not commentary level or mm -hmm. even big study Bible level, like ESV study Bible, mm -hmm. or even the life application, the introductions to the books are fairly short, but they do something funny. After it gives you like, here's an overview, here's what the book's about. <laughs> At the bottom, it gives you a rating, huh. like, in, like in the movies, and it rates the books. These are the themes that it says, G, general audiences, I, intense themes, don't know what that means, <laughs> L, strong <laughs> language, S, sexual content and V violence. Okay. So each book introduction, let's look at Song of Solomon because that's the one that I mean some rabbis forbid young kids from even reading Song of Solomon. So we turn to Song of Solomon, I L S V. All right, so let me see. I I is for, for intense, intense themes. Okay. L L is for language. 
S is for sexual content and B is for violence. Right. So that's letting you know, hey, right up front, you're going to get all this in this book. But the actual introduction to the book is not even a full page. It's just that Mm -hmm. and that. And what does that offer us? This just tells us who the author is, when it was written, the type of literature, some of the major themes you're going to find in it and where Mm -hmm. to look them up in the back. And then it's just got two paragraphs, Our God, the Romantic, and Jesus and the Song of Songs. You know, we have a whole section in our course to know and be known on the Song of Songs. So seeing just half of like two paragraphs, just it hurts. All right, JM. Yes. Have another question because inquiring minds want to know. As they should. Are there any other features in this Bible that make it unique? There are. Well, there are a few others that I think are worth pointing out because they're noteworthy. Uh, One is there's like a 15 page essay on how to study the Bible. And it's actually for a Bible of this nature, it's pretty in depth. It is like an exegesis course wrapped into a 15 page essay. So it talks about how do I study the Bible when I'm reading poetry? How do Mm -hmm. I study the Bible when I'm reading history? How do I study when I'm reading discourse? All of the the questions about genre and interpretation and original languages and Mm -hmm. word studies and things like that. That's actually really helpful. It's at the back. After the dictionary of, of theological terms at the back, which explain names, concepts, you know, things that are important. There is a glossary of Christian jargon. Yes. And this is really helpful because Christians, you know, we throw around phrases that people who aren't Christians are mm-hmm. oftentimes like, well, what does that even mean? So one that I got a lot when I was a kid is my aunt always used to say she would pray for a hedge of protection around me. <laughs> the hedge of protection. <laughs> well, hedge of protection. Let's see if it's in here. E-F-G-H and hedge of protection. Yes. So here's the entry. I'll just read it to you. It says, Hedge of Protection. Unfortunately, this isn't a shrub you can pick up at your (laughs) local nursery. Instead, it's a word picture used to describe special protection. This exact phrase is not found in scripture, but see Job 1.10, Isaiah 5.5, Although people use it to express a desire for God to provide a bubble-like guard of angels, (laughs) they really said a bubble-like guard of angels around a person or event to prevent injury or demonic attack. So that's an example of a term that's, it's not even in scripture, Mm -hmm. but Christians use it so much, which I always laughed at because I'm like, if I want a wall of protection, I want Mm -hmm. a force field of protection, I can walk over a hedge. A hedge is not going to keep I out. really did think they were bushes. Yeah. I, I thought, thank you for praying for me about these bushes around me. I mean, who Very doesn't want a shrubbery? So another uh, one I'm curious about, mm-hmm. and a lot of couples might be interested in knowing what uh, missionary dating actually means. Missionary dating. Yes. What is that? And is it in it this Bible? It is in the Bible on page 1653. Missionary dating, not to be confused with dating a missionary. <laughs> this term refers to the practice of dating someone in the hope that the person will become a Christian through interaction with you. It actually says this, to editorialize a bit, it's not a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> Either your special someone will feel you have false motives or you may end up marrying an unbeliever and the Bible is clear about that being wrong. So they not only define the Christian term, they even threw in a little editorializing, Ooh, which is funny. Not a good idea. Very <laughs> very much an opinion. In now I know people who have married at all states of belief and mm-hmm. unbelief. I'm not going to weigh in on that one, but I will say it's funny that it's actually in the glossary of Christian jargon. I have tried missionary <laughs> dating and failed. Uh, yes, it is. It, it does not have a great track record <laughs> overall, but there are exceptions, I guess. Okay, so are there any other words, jargon in that, that you've encountered a lot? Yeah, actually, I mean, I grew up a preacher's kid, so I've encountered literally all of these <laughs> <laughs> through youth groups over the years. But yeah, there are some that are actually things that, that we teach on here at Disciple Dojo. So mm-hmm. there's the phrase, after God's own heart. It comes from the story of God choosing David over Saul and Samuel saying, he's chosen David, a man after God's own heart. Right. And the actually the description of what that means is contrary to what the Bible actually means when it says it, what the Hebrew phrase, uh, kilbavo, after his own heart, actually means. So if you want to know what that phrase really means, you can look up what it means at a colloquial level here in this Mm -hmm. glossary. But if you really want to know what it actually means, 
then click this video right here for where we talk about that in our Bible for the rest of us course. Yeah. And the same thing with some of the terms related to end times. You know, mm-hmm. Christians get crazy when it comes to end time stuff. So there are terms in here about left behind, about the rapture, mm-hmm. uh, premillennial, amillennial, all of these terms that people kind of somewhat are vaguely aware of, but may not know where exactly they come from in the Bible. They're all listed in this glossary, but we teach on those specifically here at Disciple Dojo in that same course, Bible for the rest of us. So for uh, for instance, the left behind, the most one of the most misunderstood verses in the entire mm-hmm. Bible. Click right there. We're going to talk all about what that means. And actually, according to Jesus, you should want to be left behind, mm-hmm. which is the complete opposite of how it gets taught by most people. And JM <laughs> is not Kirk Cameron. I have been confused all my life for Kirk Cameron, but I am not. Or Nicolas Cage. <laughs> so the question I have for JM now is, are there any final thoughts you have on this Bible? And... What we all want to know is what you recommend it. Uh, final thoughts, if I may put on my Jerry Springer hat, be good to one another. And no, final thoughts would be the the pros to this are it does explain a lot of things that most Bibles don't explain. Mm-hmm. So that is really helpful. And it's geared towards giving people an entry into the Bible mm-hmm. that I think, at least in terms of what they're trying to do, is commendable. But two big points that lead me to not be able to fully recommend this. The first is there are no study notes on the individual verses. Mm-hmm. So for a study Bible, I think that's I don't I think if there are no study verses, it's not a study Bible. It may mm-hmm. be something else. And I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but it's it's a more of a theme Bible. Mm-hmm. For that reason, I can't recommend it as a study Bible. Okay. You know, as something that you want to give someone as an introduction to the Bible, honestly, I think you're better off giving them a life application Bible. I think you're better off giving them uh, an IV study Bible or just one of the other more entry-level study Bibles that are on the market. The other knock that I have on this is the way they executed the whole path study thing. It's very mm-hmm. confusing. They put the introduction to the subject as like next in line to the first article about that subject. And even explaining it is confusing. Mm. Just the whole way, it's just poorly executed in what they were trying to do and what they actually did. It's not like if you have this, throw it away. It's not bad. It's not going to lead anybody astray. Mm -hmm. But if you're looking to spend money to buy a study Bible for you to understand the text, you would be much better off buying a life application or an NLT study Bible or some of the other ones we've reviewed and just getting a copy of like how to read the Bible for all it's worth by Mm -hmm. Fee and Stewart or or something like that along those lines. Well, thank you for taking the time. Thank you for hosting (laughs) this episode. I appreciate it, ma'am. Guys, thanks for tuning in for this special edition of Disciple Dojo Study Bible Reviews with Joanne. If you want to see more of these reviews. One, go ahead and check out the playlist, the Bible Nerd playlist here, which we have about 20 different study Bibles that we reviewed, and we're always adding to them. If you have suggestions for study Bibles you would like me to review, leave that in the comments below. One thing you can do that's incredibly helpful to us as we continue to grow the Disciple Dojo YouTube channel is subscribe. Click on the link right there. Yep, that one. And subscribe to this channel so we can continue to make more of these videos. And maybe Joanne will make another appearance in a future review or a future video on other topics because she is uh, has her own expertise in different areas. So we may have her back as our expert guest, and I will be the one asking the questions. So here's one other point I want to say about following JM. If I have any questions about theology, this is who I go to. Highly recommend. Make sure you follow the YouTube channel. Well, thank that was unsolicited, by the way. It really was. That was a surprise review, but I'll mm-hmm. take it. Thank you so much. <laughs> Guys, we'll see you next time. Have a great week. Bye.